Oh no, Vortisor swarming to pick over the debris. Get away from there, you vultures! Leave that wreck in peace! It's no use. Unless... Yes, if I can just spin the TARDIS a little closer. Paul McGann's Eighth Doctor, while only appearing for one full on-screen story, has over 10 times the amount of episodes, plots, twists and turns than the Ninth Doctor, who landed himself an entire 13 episode long series in 2005. Thanks to Big Finish, a variety of new stories are able to be told with what would have been wasted potential left behind by the show. The Eighth Doctor along with other Doctors like Colin Baker's Sixth Incarnation and even again Christopher Eccleston's Ninth Doctor are having their flaws rectified thanks to these audio stories. While we could be looking into the big Finnish realm of the 11th Doctor, the War Doctor or even Unit in Torchwood, today we are beginning our 4 episode journey of the 8th Doctor's big Finnish run. Covering his entire run in timeline order across 4 videos on my channel, each focusing on a separate era of the 8th Doctor big Finnish audios. Today we look at the pre-phase, which covers everything up to the end of Dark Eyes, which is one of the 8th Doctor's most well-known audio pieces. Our next video will see the pre-war phase as we cover all of the stories in the lineup to the Time War, with our third and fourth video being the Time War and the Great Beyond, which covers some loose stories better focused on their own out of timeline view. So with all of that out of the way, subscribe for quality content because no offence, but apart from Josh Snares, I don't see anyone else making good content like this. Bombastic side eye. Let's begin the story of the 8th Doctor. Big finish edition. TARDIS manual, TARDIS manual, TARDIS manual, not here are you? Our story begins with main range set 123A. The story, Company of Friends, the story of Bernie Summerfield, sees Professor Summerfield set to recover a TARDIS key from a certain Time Lord. Following this, on the planet of Entusso, the Doctor and Fitz investigate Alien Defense Incorporated. But the question of the story is, what is more menacing, the Vermin Queens or the ongoings of the ADI itself? 123C has the Doctor and Izzy begin their voyage for the most dangerous comic book in history. In Mary Shelley's story 123D, the Doctor arrives at Lord Byron's house in 1816, and guests share horrifying blood-curdling stories with each other. But with a monster on the loose outside, Mary is far from short of inspiration for her stories. This episode contradicts the main show, which a lot of Big Finish has done, so it could be argued that thanks to this and indeed other Big Finish stories that it's no longer in the timeline. But towards the end of the time warp, branch timelines were coming from every single direction, so anything that doesn't strictly add up in universe canon still works. The Silver Turk is our next stop in the timeline of the Eighth Doctor, and is the first four-part story with the Eighth Doctor and Mary Shelley. The Doctor identifies the Turk as one of his oldest enemies, which is far from the only horror running at large within the city. Witch from the Well is our next story, where we see a shrieking, killing nightmare erupt from an overgrown well, hidden in the grounds of an old house. An entourage of people join the Doctor alongside his latest companion Mary Shelley to rescue two teenage twins from the clutches of this evil monster. But when a TARDIS trip goes wrong on the hunt for the origins, the group find themselves in the middle of the 17th century witch scare. The story continues as Mary faces the troublesome side of both her past, present and future. Army of Death has the TARDIS take of the Doctor and Mary to the continent of Zelonia on the world of Draxine. But after the rise of an army of the dead, the Doctor and Mary search for answers. Can this army be stopped? And what does this army of death want? Mary must journey into the dead heart of a dead city to face a terrifying adversary whose ambitions transcend the stuff of life itself. Sometime ahead in the timeline, the Doctor encounters Romana 2 and K9, and the same story of Sharda plays out once more. 
With that, we reach the end of Series 1 of our timeline and begin Series 2. Series 2 of our timeline opens with Storm Warning, which both audio snapshots from this video have been taken out from. Storm Warning is a great place to start your 8th Doctor run, as it's a classic big finish 8th Doctor story, and a brilliant joining point for new listeners. Storm Warning, set in October of 1930, sees His Majesty's airship the R101 set off on her maiden voyage to the farthest flung reaches of the British Empire, carrying the brightest lights of the Imperial fleet, carrying the hopes and dreams of a breathless nation, not to mention a ruthless spy with a top secret mission, a mysterious passenger who appears nowhere on the crew list, a would-be adventurous destined for Singapore Hilton, and a Time Lord from the planet Gallifrey. There's a storm coming, there's something unspeakable, something with wings crawling across the stern. Thousands of feet high in the blackening sky, the crew of the R101 brace themselves. When the storm breaks, their lives won't be all that's at stake. This is also the introduction to the Charlie Edwardian adventures and the main arc across her story. The web of time runs thin and that's kind of the arc here. I'm trying to keep certain spoilers at a minimum where I can and without ruining some of the great story and character beats, that's all I'm going to say for the moment. The next story, Sword of Orion, sees the 8th Doctor companion from Storm Warning, Charlie Ramsey, continue their adventure with the Doctor through time and space. This one is one of the best selling ever releases. Paul McGann's 8th Doctor along with his brand new companion Charlie in action for the Cybermen for the first time. The human race is locked in deadly combat with the android hordes in the Orion system. Light years from the front line, the Doctor and Charlie arrive to sample the dubious delights of a galactic backwater, little suspecting that the consequences of the Orion War might reach them there. But High Command's lust for victory knows no bounds. Trapped aboard a mysterious derelict Star Destroyer, the Doctor and Charlie find themselves facing summary execution. But this is only the beginning of their troubles. The real danger has yet to awaken, until somewhere in the dark recess of the Garzone system, the Cybermen receive a signal for reactivation. Next, we have another solid story, although it is worth mentioning that for an episode set in the far future, everyone speaks suspiciously as though they are from the 1600s. Anyway, the Stone of Venice has the Doctor and Charlie decide to take a well-deserved break from the monotony of being chased, shot at and generally suffering anti-social behaviour at the hands of others. And so, they end up in Venice, well into Charlie's future, as the great city prepares to sink beneath the water for the last time which would be a momentous if rather dispiriting event to witness in itself. However, the machinations of a lovesick aristocrat, a proud art historian and a rabid high priest of a really quite dodgy cult combine to make Venice's swan song a night to remember. And then there's the rebellion by the web-footed amphibious underclass, the mystery of a disappearing corpse and the truth behind a curse going back further than curses usually do. The Doctor and Charlie are forced to wonder just what they have got themselves involved with this time. In main range 19, the 21st century has just begun, and I never know how to say this, Malibolgia? Malibolgia? We'll go with the second one. And Malibolgia is enjoying its status as the newest state in America. After his successful involvement with Scotland's devolution, Brigadier Alistair Gordon Lethbridge Stewart has been invited over to Malabolgia to offer some of his experiences and expertise. There he encounters the charismatic Elisha Dashwood III, an evangelical statesman running for governor who may not be quite as clean cut and wholesome as he makes out. One of Dashwood's other roles in society is a patron of a new medical institute, concentrating on curing the ills of the human mind. One of the patients there interests a brigadier as someone who claims he has travelled through space and time in something called a TARDIS. Charlie, however, has more than a few problems of her own. She is a working hostess at the local chapter of the Hellfire Club, populated by local dignitaries who have summoned forth the demon Marchosius. 
and the leader of the club, none other than Dashwood, who seems determined to achieve congressional power by the most malevolent means at his disposal. While the original plan for this video was to get us to the end of Dark Eyes, I feel to properly do all of these stories justice and effectively showcase the timeline, we have to break down this single video into three parts. This means our new structure looks like this. So with part one of the 8th Doctor's timeline now out of the way, be sure to turn on notifications for part two, where we will delve into the end of Charlie and venture through the adventures of Lucy Miller. If you've enjoyed this video in any way, please do like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye. Do you even know what you're doing? Office controls are held on.